Hello again and welcome back to Studio ASIO and today we'll be doing another Ryzen 7000 slash AM5 build for you and it will be something even more powerful for the CPU so let's get started on that So for the CPU today, we'll be using the Ryzen 9 7900X so this is their 12 core 24 thread variant of the Ryzen series of processors. This will have a base clock speed of 4.7 GHz and is able to turbo boost up to uh, 5.6 GHz, which is plenty of power packing in this little chip. And for motherboard, we have the ASUS ROG Strix X670E-I Gaming Wi-Fi. So this is an ITX board for the X670E chipset of AM5. So Let's have a look together. So here is how the motherboard looks like. So of course, in the middle here, we have the AM5 socket for the new Ryzen 7000 series of processor. Now let's begin through the power phase and power pin of this motherboard where here we have an 8-pin CPU power connector however even though it's just being a one 8-pin connector ASUS has used its Pro Cool technology on it enabling it to support even up to 384 watts for CPU and then up here we have three fan connectors one for the CPU fan, one for AIO pump and one for the chassis fan three is usually quite a lot for an ITX board as well Next to it, we have a 3-pin ARGB connector. After that, we have a 4-pin normal RGB connector. And then from there, we have your two DDR5 RAM DIMMs for you to install DDR5 RAMs. Now, next up, we'll be talking about the ASUS ROG FPS-2 add-on that adds on into these two USB Type-C here. Now, how does this add-on work? Now, let me show you. So the add-on itself plugs directly into the two USB Type-C, as you can see from here. It adds on two additional SATA slots for your motherboard, while adding two more USB 2.0 support as well, and a front header support. It also uh, adds on a few more extra features, such as a power limiter remover option. So it allows you to overclock your CPU even further than what the board normally can do. And it also has this very useful button uh, switch over here it allows you to switch your PCI main PCIe lane from Gen 5 to Gen 4 as well as Gen 3 so all this allows you to plug in maybe into a riser cable that is only uses PCIe Gen 3 but then you can directly plug it in here without having to mess with the BIOS or anything where you can directly use this switch uh, we also have a USB 3 for the front panel support as well and then you get your primary PCIe Gen 5 X16 slot here as well for your graphic card. You also get two M.2 support on this motherboard and unlike a lot of ITX motherboard which has uh, one M.2 in the front and one at the back, here you get both of them here where you can see that the M.2 is stacked in a way like a sandwich style. So the top slot over here is for support for PCIe Gen 4 NVMEs whereas the bottom is for support of PCIe Gen 5 NVMe that is going to come out soon. Now let's take a look at the rear I.O. of this motherboard. You can see that it has two USB Type-C. Uh, the Type-C's are actually USB 4.0 uh, that uses the new Intel JHL8540 chipset to handle it. You also have five USB 3.2 Gen 2 for Type-A as well, as well as three more USB 2.0 for Type-A. Now you might have noticed as well that it doesn't come with uh, audio connectors and I'll get into that in a moment but for now, you also get a 2.5 gig Intel chipset LAN supported here and you also get a Wi-Fi 6E supported controlled by the AMD RZ616 chipset and it also comes with Bluetooth as well Now the reason why this motherboard doesn't come with audio connectors is because the audio chipset is actually handled through this this is called the ROG Hive so it's sort of like its own hub for its things where you can see that there's an additional USB 2.0 over here as well as a Type-C for allowing it to connect power through here 
and you also get USB flashback as well in one of the USBs over here. So this is the Type-C for the power and you get an additional USB Type-C 3.2 over here and a 2.0 over here that supports BIOS flashback. Now you get two US, uh, 3.5mm jack here, one of them being a combo jack and another one being an audio dedicated audio jack. And the audio here is supported by the Supreme FX 4050 chipset. So you should get very nice audio over here. After that, you also get three more buttons for this uh, Hive key. So you get a flex key over here, which allows you to adjust the key from things like Aura Sync Control to becoming a dedicated restart button. Other than that, you also get a Precision Boost Overdrive of ASUS over here, PBO button support over here. And you get a BIOS flashback button over here. And very nice convenience as well. You get to adjust the volume of your PC directly through this ROG Hive. So it's kind of, it's all in one audio solution with extra USB as well as BIOS flashback support. Next up, we have the RAM. And for RAM, we have Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR5 memory for AMD. So these are specifically made for Ryzen 7000 series in mind. And this runs at 6000 megahertz for their speed and has a cast latency of CL30, which is very tight for DDR5. And here's how they look. So this RAM as well, of course, they support the new Expo standard for AMD overclocking of RAM. Very nice to see. And next, we have our storage. For storage, we have Corsair MP600 Gen 4 NVMe SSD. So the sequential read speed for this NVMe SSD is 4950 megabytes per second, as well as a sequential write speed of 4000 megabytes per second. So it's plenty fast for an NVMe storage. So here's how it looks like. Next up, we have our graphic card. And for our graphic card, we have ASUS Tough Gaming RX 6500 XT. So this is a perfect graphic card for any 1080p gaming, as well as having support for PCIe Gen 4. And it has four gigs of GDDR6 RAM as well. And here's how the card looks like. Next up, to cool our 7900X, we have our cooler, which is Corsair's IQ Capelix H150i. So this is the white version to go along with our casing as well later. Let me open it and show you the inside if needed. To power all of the components together, we have Corsair's HX 1200 watt power supply. Now this is an 80 plus platinum power supply with a 10 year warranty to power up everything that we have for this build. 
Now here's how the power supply looks like. Ugh, a very heavy power supply. And finally, for our casing, to put all of this together in our build, we have the Corsair 4000D white colour. So this will match up very nicely with our AIO. Let's get this build on the way. And it's done! Our new Ryzen 9 7900X build is completed. So for this build, we will be posting some of our benchmark results that we've done for this build as well. We also tested out for the speed and benchmark result for Expo Off and On for this kit of RAM. And we also measured how the temperature stacks up with a 360 AIO from Corsair. So that's all from us for this 7900X build from us. Uh, what do you think of this video? Do remember to like and share this video out to all your friends as well as subscribe and follow us on our respective social media. AM5 baby!